This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, can I mask a model based on camera angle? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have the earthquake model here loaded in. And the question is asking about masking by camera angles. So let's say I want to apply a mask to earthquake here, but I only want to affect the polygons that are facing the camera. So I just want to mask out the front of earthquake, but I don't want to apply the mask to the back. So is there a way to do that inside of ZBrush? So to start off, I'm first going to go to the tool palette over here, and then I'm going to open up the sub-tool palette here, and I'm just going to make sure they only have Earthquake's body visible. So I'm going to click this eyeball icon here, and now I should just have Earthquake's body. And then I'm also going to disable the poly paint. So I'm going to come over here to the paintbrush icon. I'm going to hold down Shift and click, and this is going to turn off the poly paint for every single sub-tool on Earthquake. So now I should just have Earthquake here with just his mesh, and I just have this Skin Shade 4 material applied. So now let's say I want to take Earthquake here and I want to mask just the front of him. So by default, you could come through and take the mask pen and try to mask out all these different areas, but it's going to be a little bit tedious because you have to go through every single part and you may get around some of the edges and things like that and not fully just get the mask applied to camera angle. Well, you could try to hold Control and drag this out. So if I have the mask pen selected and I click and drag off of Earthquake, I'm going to get this mask box. And I come across the mesh like so, and I release. It looks like it masked everything on Earthquake. But as I rotate around, you can see it also affected the back side. So you may think, well, I can go to the brush palette over here, and then while well, still holding Control, and go to the Auto Masking tab and open this up, and I can enable back face masking. So back face masking will allow you to come through and mask on part of a model, and it won't affect the polygons on the other side. So this is helpful if you're using masking on thin surfaces. So let's say I have that back face masking applied, and I try this mask option again. So clicking off Earthquake here, dragging out this rectangle, and then releasing. And if I rotate around to the back of the model here, you can see that the masking still went all the way through. So the mask rectangle here is always going to be applied through everything on the mesh. So if you mask out Earthquake's arm here with mask rectangle, it's always going to go all the way through. And this is always going to happen even if you have this back face mask applied. Now what you can do is you can switch your stroke here on your mask pen to drag rectangle. So rectangle is what the default is set to. When you click and drag off the model, it's going to use this rectangle stroke. But if you come over here and use this drag rectangle stroke, ZBrush is going to now look at the normal of the surface you drew the mask out on. So if I come to Earthquake's head here, I have the mask brush selected, I have the drag rectangle stroke selected, and in the brush palette here, while holding control, you can see I have this back face mask active. If I come across his head here and I click and drag and mask out like this, now I rotate the model, you'll see that it only masked the front of his face. So the back of his head was not masked. So if you hold control, get your mask pen, set your stroke to drag rectangle, and then go to the brush palette and activate back face masking, this will allow you to apply a mask only where you clicked and dragged on the model. So if I want to mask just the entire front of Earthquake here, I can hold control and drag this mask out. Now you may need to repeat this a few times since the drag rectangle stroke is going to give you a soft mask. You can try changing your focal shift here, which will give you a little bit stronger mask, but the best process for this is to drag out once and then simply press one on your keyboard here, which will repeat the last stroke. And this will now come through and reapply that mask there. So you can just keep pressing one. You can see the mask is getting darker. So it's just reapplying that drag that I just did. And you just keep pressing this until you don't see a change anymore. And that's gonna apply that mask at 100%. And now you can see I have Earthquake's entire front masked out. And if I rotate around him here, you can see that the faces that were not facing the camera there have not been masked. So that is one way you can come through and mask out a model based on camera angle. So that process again is just rotate the model to the angle that you want to mask. So if I want to mask everything that's facing the camera right here, Hold control, make sure you have drag rectangle selected, make sure that brush is in back face masking mode, and then draw this out. 
and then repeat that stroke by pressing 1 on your keyboard and you can keep repeating this until you get that mask at 100%. So sometimes this may take a few clicks here. So you can see his hand in the back there isn't fully masked yet. So just keep pressing 1 to repeat that stroke. And then after you see no more change on the model, if you rotate around, you're now going to see that it's only masked the faces that were facing the camera there. So you can see all this part here of Earthquake have now been unmasked. Now in addition to just using this drag rectangle stroke with the mask brush, you can also establish polygrouping based on camera angle. So I'm going to turn on my polyframes here and turn off line. You can see Earthquake is broken into a, a few different polygroups. I'm going to press Control and W, which will come through and assign a new polygroup to the entire mesh here. And now I'm going to rotate Earthquake to the side again, like this. Now I'm going to go to the tool palette over here. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here to the polygroups area. And in the polygroups area here, you have a group front button. So this is going to do a similar process to what we just saw when using the drag rectangle with the masking. And when you click this group front button, it's going to look at all the polygons that are facing the camera, and it's going to assign them a new poly group. So if I come over here and click group front with Earthquake facing like this, you're going to see that he will get a new poly group to this one part of the model. Let me just click this one more time to get a different color here so it's a little more visible. And now if I rotate Earthquake, you're going to see that all the polygons that were facing the camera there now have a new poly group applied. And so you can see I now have this coloring of the polygroup here and a different polygroup on the other side. So you can come through, set the angle of your model, use this group front button to get a new polygroup established on those polygons that are facing the camera. Now that you have that polygrouping established, I can now hold Control and Shift to select that polygrouped area. I can now hold Control and drag out a mask on that polygroup and then hold Control and Shift and click on a blank spot of the canvas to return the visibility of the entire mesh. And you see now I have all those front-facing polygons masked out. So that process for using the polygroups is first just establish polygrouping on your model. So I'm going to hit Control w to just get a new polygroup across the entire mesh. Rotate your model accordingly. So I'm going to rotate Earthquake so he's front-facing here. Go to the Tool Palette. Go to the Polygroup area and click this Group Front button. And I'll apply a new polygroup to all those front-facing polygons. And then if you rotate the side, you can see Earthquake is now broken into two polygroups. And all the polygons that were facing forward have now got this new polygroup. I can now isolate by that polygroup by holding Control and Shift with the select rectangle brush selected and clicking. I can now hold Control and apply a mask to that polygroup. Then I can hold Control and Shift and click off the model to bring everything back. And now I have those polygons masked out. So that is another process you can use to mask by camera angle. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!